thank thank everyone for the amazing conference. I always like to come to BS Micro and I like the atmosphere. And uh, I'm going to talk to you today about a project we are having with a group of people at IDIF in Leipzig, Germany, about taxonomic harmonization. So I say taxonomic harmonization, and basically we have to make a step back to understand where does it come from. In macroecology, we merge the different data sets to answer questions. And imagine we have like a data set A, like conservation status, and the data set B uh, about traits. For example, we want to link the conservation status of different species depending on the traits. The thing is, if you look at closely at the data set, you can list the species that are that are in, in either which uh, either of them. And the question is, how can I know which species is which? The problem is sometimes the taxonomy changed. And even if the species are not then the same, they're actually the same biological entity. So you have to compare this list of species to a taxonomic reference database, which actually gets, gets you to the species concept. And this is exactly what taxonomic harmonization is about. It's about, it's this technical step where you have to, when you merge different lists of species to answer your question. And taxonomic harmonization standardizes the species name list with a reference. So if I follow, why is it important? Well, if I take a specific example that links the bird extinction which in risk in function of bio, of the biomass, uh, so I get I get the two inf different information for different sources, and I get two lists of species. How do I proceed in, pra in practice? So one way would say, oh, let's just like look at the species and match the species that have exactly the same name. And you, you see that, two of these species have exactly the same name in both assets. So it means like in total, if you combine both of these lists of species, we get 13 different species and two species only have the information in both data sets. Whereas if you perform um, taxonomic harmonization with a, with a reference database, well, you end up in the blue case where you have in total, nine different species and six species, six, six species have information in both data sets. So that's exactly why um, taxonomic harmonization is important because it makes data set comparable. So even though it's not, a, it's generally not thought as an important step, it's, it is because you can actually leverage, you get more data from it. So I say it's a foggy landscape right now because there are no general outlook on the sources of taxonomic information that exist. There are no real clear overview of the available tools, and there's no real guide on how to proceed. And macroecologists need actually guidance uh, on, on these steps because unless you're a taxonomist, uh, you don't really know how to proceed with this, with how to, to actually standardize species lists. So this was exactly our, our, our motivation uh, uh, to, to work on this project. We wanted to write an overview paper on all these topics. And as macroecologists, we were all annoyed when realizing we all have different kind of different workflows uh, to solve the exact same problem. So the first step is to describe the landscape uh, of what's available. Uh, the first thing we need is taxonomy sources. Uh, so where are the sources? They're in databases. How exactly, what are those? Well, uh, they're cool. I call them taxonomic reference database, but you can find a bunch of different terms that exactly mean the same thing in the literature. So they're sometimes called taxonomic backbone, taxonomic checklist, or taxonomic authority. Uh, but basically it's the same concept. The idea is that there are a centralized repository of nomenclatural information. And they also provide spelling correction, and, and also synonymy resolution. So it's even more than only a repository of nomenclatural information that also provides some additional services on top of that. On top of that. And in terms where we should not see exactly what are nomenclatural information, think about the taxonomy. This is nom a nomenclature of, the of, of species with the different levels. So this is the first piece of information we have. And if you if you need to think about exa examples, I can al uh, always cite the GBIF backbone, which is one of the most well known. It's a global uh, level uh, bio taxonomic reference database, and it has no taxonomic restriction. And uh, it has uh, around 6.6 .6 million names. 3.7 of them, which are uh, designer accepted, so they're they're the ones who who are referenced, and 2.6 million synonyms. And you can think of other many other sources, and I, I'll go through one uh, one other, which is the Leipzig Catalog of Vascular Plants that got recently published, which is a, uh, a global taxonomic backbone only for vascular plants, and it has 
1.3 million names, uh, 350,000 uh, that are accepted, and 850,000 that are synonyms. So based on this, you can start to see that it's actually like that you have different sources that are, that are different in different ways. And we can actually make a typology of the different sources. And the, the thing that's, that really struck us when th th thinking about this is this typology was nowhere explicit. So that's why I think it's important to make it explicit. So we have a database that are separated along their taxonomic breadth. So from taxonomic sources that are focused on a single taxonomic group to sources that have absolutely no taxonomic restriction. And they're also different in terms of their special scale. So some of them are available at the regional scale. Some of them are available at the global scale. So for example, if I get back to my example of the Leipzig catalog uh, uh, of vascular plants, it's a, a database focused on a single taxonomic group, vascular plants, and it's at global scale. Uh, compared to Dubif, uh, that, is, that is focused on, uh, which is at global scale and has no taxonomic restriction. And we can, we, what we did is we basically drew a map of all different taxonomic database and fill all of these gaps at different, uh, different breadths and different scales. So now you know that you have different, the sources are different in, them, in themselves. Now that we have the sources, we need the tools to actually work with this, this, this information. And that's where we were interested in looking at all the R packages that exist to manipulate taxonomic information. So what we did is we performed uh, an extensive review of packages we could find either on CRAN, so the central R repository, uh, GitHub and Bioconductor. And we identified 53 packages for some of which uh, I've put an icon off. And uh, these packages make different, have different purposes, and most of them actually access databases, and they can help you. Um, they can help you manipulate the information. So, with all the with all the sources, with, with, with all the we we now have the sources, but the tools, but we, it's not exactly clear how to proceed now. And that's where we realized there was probably a gap somewhere because we didn't identify all the sources, like not all the sources were clearly identified, not all the packages were clearly identified. So we built our own tool. We built our own tool to actually map the taxonomic tool landscape and we called it Tax Harmonize Explorer. And what is it exactly? Well, it's a shiny app. So it's an interactive app that's available online and it provides you the, for the, the relationship between each package and each database and lets you search through it. So it shows the direct, directed relationship between databases and packages. So which package accepts which database, but also which database is built on which other, and also which package depends on which other. Uh, it shows basic information on, on the package in the database. So it tells you which taxonomic group is covered by this database, uh, uh, or when can this tool be used, uh, and is it, if it's actively maintained or not, and the, URLs that, were, that you can access, uh, to which you can access, and it's a living database. So for now, we're still working on making it, um, making it bigger, and we're really waiting for your feedback. The tool is accessible at this uh, URL, and you can scan this, the, the QR code to actually access it. It's already online, and uh, we'll be happy if you think we're missing some databases, some tools. We'll be really happy, uh, happy to uh, add them. And actually, it's been quite a struggle to get this information because most databases don't really provide a clear description on the links between them. So, um, so that's why it will, like we we keep still uh, working on that, and we have to we contacting uh, database owners to get a better sense of the links, so that once we know the links between databases, it helps users to actually know which database they can use. Um, so, it's all for now. Uh, so um, uh, 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 I'll be uh, I'll come to a conclusion right now. So what I want you to get from the thing is we have to emerge from this foggy landscape, uh, and like the thing as macroecologists, uh, we need not to underestimate taxonomic harmonization because it's needed to achieve high quality matching of our data and leverage all the power we have in our data. Uh, you can, to know the taxonomic landscape of databases and tools, you can use Tax, tax Harmonize Explorer. And I hope I convinced you it was an interesting tool. Um, 
And actually, we're working right now on a paper that is going to talk, talk about this issue in great more details because I only had 12 minutes to present uh, our research here. So it's, it will be a review of databases and tools with your characteristics and relationships. That's what I presented today. But we, and we also proposed an interactive Shiny app that I also presented. But what we want to do is we want to summarize best practices for users, developers, and data managers to actually um, to actually uh, get a list of what you can do uh, in terms of uh, harmonizing taxonomy, and also suggest workflow in pra practice with case study. So right now we're in the process of uh, writing the, the 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 manuscript, and we plan to submit to a special issue in methods and ecology and evolution uh, because I th we think it's su it, it, it's super cool. And if you want to, if you're interested. Well, you can uh, follow this the special issue, but also you can contact me on social networks and whenever. And uh, I'd like to thank you all for your attention, and I'll be ha very happy to answer some questions. Wow, thank you so much. That was that was really interesting. I could definitely have used this tool at the start of my PhD. I spent a lot of time matching taxonomies. So that's fantastic. Um, Right, we have got a couple of questions in the, well, quite a few questions in the chat, actually. Um, so a question from Thomas. Oh, not a question, we won't read that. Adrienne, thanks for the talk. Um, I was wondering how much overlap do you think there is among the different taxonomic reference databases? Oh, you're on mute, can you hear us? Yeah, sorry, could, could you repeat the question? Yeah, of course. It's, um, I was wondering how much overlap do you think there is among the different taxonomic reference database? That's, that's, that's one of the most important question. And we wanted at some point, like when we started the project, we wanted to get a quantitative overlap between databases. And it's a very difficult answer because most databases, what we realized is even though the databases don't tell you, they're actually linked. They use the same data sources and they're built on top of each other. So it's very difficult. That's why we wanted to build this network of databases to actually see what are the possible links. And even with that, we're just saying some of the information is, is, is the same or is coming from one or the other. For example, recently, GBIF uh, started to use Catalog of Life as their taxonomic uh, primary source. But we realized that a couple of months ago, they decided that for some taxa, catalog of life taxonomy wasn't good enough. So they decided for some groups, specific groups, not to use them and use uh, another taxonomy that they built. And they had very good reasons for that. I mean, taxonomy are scientific objects also, but it makes it very difficult for users to navigate in this landscape. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got another question from Gustavo. Um, he says, very cool presentation, thank you. Do you have any plans on including fossil databases such as PBDB and or now? That could be a very good, uh, a very good, uh, a very good thing to do. We haven't considered it because we're not paleoecologists ourselves. But uh, the only thing we think of, like the only criteria we have to include database in our data set is they provide taxonomic uh, reference of any kind. So that's why we're interested in having like a, a, the largest bucket, bucket as possible. Brilliant. Okay, thank you very much. There's uh, quite a lot more questions for you on Slack, um, but we'll leave it there for now. Thank you very much again.